My name is Michael Gordon White, and welcome to Candid Street. This week, I'm going to be talking all about photographing people walking while you are out shooting street photography. This one is pretty straightforward, and that's why I'm starting with it. Well, it's kind of straightforward. The main activity you will be doing while out practicing street photography is walking, and you will see endless people doing the same thing, all walking. It's everywhere. People walking towards you, away from you, or you could be standing still and they walk past you. You may think I'm trying to be funny here, but in fact I'm very serious. People walking can make for some very satisfying pictures. We see these pictures all over the place in advertisements or in fashion magazines. So it's something we are used to seeing, although you may have never paid any attention to it, but it works. And again, as you will find yourself surrounded by people doing this every day, well, you might as well give it a shot. As I'm going through my work just now, not surprisingly, I have many pictures of people walking. Again, I like this shot, but I find to be successful with this kind of picture, timing is everything. Just pointing the camera at someone walking down the street and taking an unplanned random shot isn't going to work. There is a rhythm to a person's walking. It's called pace. To start off with this kind of shot, I want you to first not try to take any pictures, but rather just watch people walking. And as you do so, try to find the rhythm. Count it off in your head. One, two, one, two. Because where I come from, people are bipedal. They have two legs and hopefully two feet. So this presents a tick-tock pattern. You need to find this pattern and become one with it in your mind. Why is this so important? Because the most successful pictures have the legs and arms positioned in a couple of specific points in a person's stride. Let me explain. They're either fully extended with the leading foot completely flat on the ground at the beginning of the stride, or just at the point when the feet are close together as one passes the other in mid stride. Anything else usually doesn't work for me. Let me explain the reasons for this. At the fully extended position, the arms are also swinging forward and backwards, fully extended as well. This position makes for a very dynamic shot. It's unmistakable that this person is on the move, and this movement is something we can relate to and we know exactly what is happening. Therefore, we enjoy looking at this kind of picture. It's satisfying because of the familiarity of it. It also offers a sense of slimming if the person is walking towards you or away from you if you catch the timing just right. It's also very graceful looking as the hips are swung out and the arms are extending. It just looks nice. The other thing about this point in the stride is that the back foot is still touching the ground, but the heel has lifted off. This is precisely the time before the back foot comes off the ground, and if a woman is wearing stiletto shoes, it can look amazing. The fully extended point of a person's stride is the one that I try to capture the most, because it just looks the best from any direction. If you look at a picture of this from the front, back, or even the side, it just works. From the side view, you will have a very dynamic shot with lots of angles, and the quicker the person is walking, it offers a tremendous sense of movement. Now don't misunderstand me when I say try to get the feet in the shot. It doesn't matter if the feet are in the shot or not, it's the position of the feet that matters. It's this point in the stride that puts the upper body in the most flattering position for a successful shot. Every other position, except the one with the feet close together, just looks awkward, and in my opinion, is a failure. So if the lower legs and feet are not in the shot, if the stride is timed right, the upper body will look great and make for a successful shot. Take a close look at the examples in the video to get an idea of what I'm looking for. Now the other position, as I explained where the one foot is just passing the other foot, that is fully planted on the ground in mid-stride, this also offers a very pleasing position for a successful shot. It's just something I find very graceful. This kind of shot is less dynamic than the previous one, which adds to the graceful, pleasing feeling, but it's how everything falls into place that works for me. It's hard to describe. It's just a feeling I get. It's almost as though the person is standing still, but the position of the feet close together and where the hands are, well, it just works. Let's talk about hand position for a bit, as this is extremely important. 
I know I'm going on about feet position, but it's where the feet are in the stride that places the hands in the best position for a pleasing shot. This is especially true when it comes to getting a shot of a person walking away from you. With the person fully extended with the back foot placed precisely before it is about to come off the ground, the opposite hand will also be fully extended backwards towards you. That's the exact moment to take the shot. That hand in this position can look very relaxed, flowing, and beautiful. I see this over and over again, and I'm thrilled when I actually capture this. It's usually one of my favorite shots. Don't underestimate the power of hands in a photograph. You'll hear this often in photography circles, but hand position can either make or break a shot. We're talking about taking pictures of people here. Yes, street photography, but if this includes people in the shot, you want to make them look their best. At least that's what I try to do every time I go out. And hands need to be in the best position at all times. Otherwise, it will just look off. Trust me. Now, another part of the equation when it comes to a successful walking shot has to do with clothing and hair. Now, I'm obviously talking about women here, but when I see long flowing dresses and or long flowing hair as a woman is walking as described before, there is a lot of dynamic movement happening. And if it is all captured together with perfect timing, it can look, well, I just think it looks beautiful. You can be walking down the street looking for a shot as people go by. Boring, uninteresting, boring again, doesn't stand out, boring yet again, and on and on. And then all of a sudden, up ahead, there appears someone with long flowing hair and a beautiful full-length flowing dress. It's like I was just dropped into the middle of a runway fashion shoot. I'm trying to be funny here, but this does happen often, and it's something that I don't waste time trying to capture. I think I like this so much because I absolutely love fashion photography. I'm not a fashion photographer, obviously, but I do envy those that are in the field. There is a long and incredible history in fashion photography, and without a doubt, I have been influenced by it. I love coming across a fashionably, beautifully dressed woman or man. It just stands out. It makes for some nice shots in a world full of mundane. And I appreciate when a person takes the time and effort to look good like this. Why wouldn't I want to capture a pleasing image of them? Again, none of this may be your thing, and that's completely fine. I'm just demonstrating what I like to shoot and offering some ideas. Now, it's all good if you can capture a person in a pleasing way while walking, but if you want to up your game, try to get more than one person in the shot. One person is fairly easy once you get the hang of things, but two, or better yet, three people walking together, well, that's the ultimate challenge. But good news, when people are walking together, they usually are keeping the same stride timing. I think the reason for this is that their heads will be at the same level, which allows for easy conversations to take place. Otherwise, you get into this silly piston action happening, <laughs> which can look completely hilarious. Just something to think about and try as you're out on a photo walk. Don't get too hung up on what I'm describing as perfect timing with the stride. Don't worry if you miss it. I have plenty of shots that are very close to the description before of stride timing, but I missed. But these shots are still good, usually because of some other factor, like lighting or clothing. I'm just trying to explain what I'm after when it comes to taking a picture of someone walking. It takes lots of practice to get it right. But the important thing is that you need to have an idea about stride and timing. Just don't take a shot randomly. That's called a snapshot. And with my help, you can get way better results than that. Okay, that's it for now. I know it was a lot. If you learned anything new and you liked what you saw, please give it a like and press that subscribe button. There's lots more to come. Thanks for watching, and we will see you again on Candid Street. Be safe and take care.